Hello, this is John Spielman with the latest video version of one of my columns for Chess Space. And I'm just going to go over and check that we're recording. And we are. Good. So sorry about the little other silly screen just then. So I've called this column Bluff and Thunder. And it's basically, it was... I started thinking about it because of the incident between Anand and Mamadiarov in the penultimate round in Norway, in which Anand played a gross blunder and was so shocked that he resigned on the spot, and without waiting for his opponent, for Mamadiarov, to find the winning reply. So the question was, I mean this is not an optimal approach, because the winning reply, I'll, I'll put it in the chess space, it's um, this position, sorry, it's down the bottom here. I moved this down the bottom here. Where's my mouse there? Sorry, fighting with my mouse. So they reached this position and Vichy played here. Am I going to fight with the mouse today? It's really going to be exciting for you, isn't it? Vichy played Queen B5 and he resigned because he saw the winning reply. And I think almost all the, all the readers will, or watchers will know what the winning reply is. It's Queen takes F3 check. Now, um, I don't think it's that easy a move to see. I saw he'd resigned online, and I took about half a minute, which is a bit slow, I mean, I admit, to see Queen F3 check, and I thought, oh, ping. But um, apparently MVL, Maxim Vashir Lagrave, saw Queen F3 check instantly when he looked at the um, position on the board. So it's hard to tell... Um, how easy or difficult it would be to play this. It certainly wouldn't be very difficult, but you could miss it. And the question is what what um, Vichy should have done. Now, the best thing to do, but it's very, very difficult, it depends. You have to be a good poker player and you have to be really in command of your nerves because it's different from playing poker. You know, you've been playing this important game, you've been playing this important tournament, it isn't one hand of poker or something, however important. It is weeks of your life. Uh, and there you are, you see that something awful has happened, so what do you do? If you can sit placidly, that's great. I don't think I could. Um, obviously you don't resign, if you, unless you're in such shock it just happens. So you should get up from the board, I think. Now, if you're somebody who walks during the game and looks wanders around the tournament or looks at the games, that's fine. You go for a wander. No problem. You go for a wander. If the guy plays queen f3 check, you resign and congratulate him. If you can bear to, but you certainly resign politely. If um, he doesn't, you try to gather yourself and carry on playing chess. And your first problem, say he play. I don't know, well, say he played a6, then actually the only move is queen f5. Sorry, you can't play a6 because the rook's on pre's. Say he played c6, then you'd have to play queen f5, because actually if queen d3, queen f3 check still works, interestingly. So, um, okay. You, if, he, if he plays a move that doesn't win immediately, you, count, you get yourself together and play a, a reasonable reply. Otherwise, you resign. If you don't walk around the tournament hall, then I think you have to go to the loo, go to the toilet. Uh, you go and hide. You hide for long enough so that there's a decent chance he'll either have played the move or he won't, because you don't want to come back and have to sit at the board again. If he has, you congratulate him. If he hasn't, you carry on. Now, there is a problem that in Norway there were other games going on at the same time, and MVL had already seen Queen F3 check, he would have transmitted some excitement probably even if he's a really really he's very well behaved you know honorable guy but still when you see something exciting like that it's hard not to uh have a flicker and i think that shack would have noticed from what was going on that something had happened so i don't think even if he hadn't immediately foreseen it seen it he hadn't foreseen it that he would actually have not seen it because he would have thought why are these people looking at my board it looks quite a boring position and then he would have thought oh what um ug is is what i use on my 
uh, when I when I'm streaming, Ugh, for sort of amazement and also for blundering, and he would have played the move. Right. Now the next example, I said that I had an example in Dortmund years ago. We had a time scramble. It's with Daniel Campera. Um, I was black, and I'd lost exchange earlier, and I'd been fighting hard. And at some stage, I was trying to make a draw. Obviously, he's obviously trying not to. This is move forty, and I saw he was about to play knight d three, and I thought I'd prevent this move. Apparently, e five is a decent move, by the way, according to the supreme software from today. And I played the glorious move queen b three, and as you can see, this is suboptimal. And actually, I held up my hand to resign to him. But he looked completely confused. So I suppose if I'd been an absolutely perfect gentleman, I would have insisted on resigning. But I didn't. I mean, I think, you know, you are in some shock yourself. So I went for a walk around the tournament hall. And the longer he didn't play knight takes b3, the longer I thought I had a chance. And eventually he played knight d3. I think it took him maybe three or four, five minutes. So I played knight takes c3 and offered a draw. And he said yes. And then we walked back to the hotel together and I thought, do I tell him? And I thought, yes, I'm not being rude. I don't want to upset him. You know, I try not to upset my opponents apart from playing by playing good moves. But there is no chance in this world, the next or the one beyond that, that um, when he meets a chess player, they won't say, why the hell didn't you take his queen? So I might as well just, just fess up now. So I did confess now. So I did, but that was a pretty amazing thing. And I was lucky in that case that it was at the end of the round. Maybe there was one other game going on, but no more. And so there weren't people, it was Dortmund. It was a big tournament all with just us in it. So there wasn't a crowd gathered to look at this spectacle. As presumably if a crowd had gathered, then Daniel would have thought, why is there a crowd? And you thought, oh. And uh, he would have taken my queen. Anyway. That's that. So then um, I then went on. Um, I started talking about bluffing and how sometimes you have to bluff. Sometimes you have absolutely no choice but to bluff. And I have a game that I played in um, Banrati a few years ago. I think it was five years ago, maybe. Yep. And OK, I'm trying to wind this really young guy up by playing a pits, but he plays the Austrian attack, I play my moves. I mean knight b4 is not ridiculous I think in here, here, here. And takes, takes, but he takes and goes back and presumably it's not great for me. Perhaps I can play e6 now or something and get a reasonable position, I don't know. But um, he played it, we played these moves. I broke in the center. Didn't work out very well for me. Somewhere around about here I, I took him. I went rook e8. I think bishop f5 is decent but bishop takes, bishop takes pawn takes rook a3 is a very good answer actually. Which the engine screams oh yes and I think oh my god yes that's very unpleasant. With another his rook entering the attack. So it would have been pretty bad probably. I went here and I took and I should have just defended my pawn, but I thought I could be a bit more provocative, so I went here. And I played this, which I think was the idea to threaten to go to um, d3 check, and probably, I don't know quite how it works. Well, it defends d6 as well, doesn't it? I suppose if you went king h1, I'd probably go rook f8 or something, and I'd claim I was okay which might almost be true in a really good day with the following wind. But he quite rightly went b4 and I took and he went b1. And it's round about here that I froze because I suddenly saw that my intended continuation lost outright. And I thought for a long time and I played a ridiculous move. I played queen takes a5. He took and I resigned because my position's an absolute bloody wreck. So I should have gone queen c5. And he takes, and I go check, and he goes away, and I go rook g8. And I had thought that this was okay, but unfortunately, I don't know if you've seen the analysis there, there is a winning move here for white. There is a crushing reply, 
and the crushing reply is Queen takes that check. I have to stop mate, so this is the only move, and he calmly takes my pawn. And now my problem, which is completely terminal, is that there is no way that I can prevent him from winning, from reaching a totally winning pawn ending. He's going to play something like h3, rook f4, king h2, and round about then he'll go rook f8 check. And he'll get to an ending with his king already in f4, and it'll be trivial with his, in fact, two extra pawns, but mainly the one on the king side. The one on d3 is even useful, because if I play king h2, he plays queen e5 to pin the rook on f4. He just plays d4, and I have to go back anyway. And then he wins easily with on the king side. So um, this is completely lost and absolutely resignable. So, but nevertheless, it was an act of gross stupidity going back here in the scheme of things to play queen takes a5. Because given that it's totally lost after I play that, then I should have bluffed him. And I should have bluffed him quickly as well. And if he'd played queen takes bishop with check, I could resign. I mean, I could either play on until he plays bishop h6 or I could resign. And either way is fine. No more damage is done. He's played a brilliant game. Bravo, well done, you've played a brilliant game. And hello, pussycat. I'm being meowed at by a pussycat now. And um, that would have been okay. Now, there are times you shouldn't bluff. And one of the main times is when you're playing a machine. You can't bluff. Well, I mean, people used to be able to bluff by going beyond the event horizon, didn't they? Uh, so they'd play something where they lost their whole position but they had a mating attack and the clever computer counted its beans and because it didn't have singular extensions I'm looking at the pussycat, sorry because it didn't have singular extensions which is the mechanism whereby if a position looks like it's still lively the computer carries on analysing beyond its allotted horizon uh, and that of course is part of the search mechanism nowadays for all computers um, so you don't, ha you don't have this advantage normally then, you know, that th you could let them take your queen side and then you'd mate them and they'd go from I'm four pawns up to, oh, ping, and I'm being mated in 20, well, mated in about 10 probably. Oh dear, bad luck. But that's not possible now. And the other thing you can try to do is perhaps to get them into an opening they're not happy with. But in this famous game, Kasparov made a great error. This has got notes both in English by John Nunn, I think, and German, I assume by Julio Grandezuniger. And I don't read German, I'm afraid. So I haven't really bothered to do anything to the notes. I've just put a couple of diagrams in. The point is that they, Kasparov played this line of the carrier, knight d7. And here you're supposed to go bishop d6, queen e2, h6, and it's playable. Though difficult, I mean, it's what I've played for a lot of my life. But he played h6. And he knew that knight takes e6 was the best move. But he also knew that the opening book, which he had seen, which IBM had provided for him, wasn't actually um, playing knight takes e6. And he believed that he, it would play knight e4. But it played knight e6. Now it's apparently you're supposed to go f takes bishop checks king e7 castles. And it's absolutely foul. I know you're a piece up, but it's unpleasant enough against a person you can try to swindle them you can try to out tactic them against a machine they'll always out tactic you and if i ask stockfish 15 now queen e7 by the way is a bad move after which he's it's he's demonstrably lost i think but if i ask stockfish now um i'll add a kibitzer of course they're much stronger even than deep blue was then now um <coughs> but i add it and i lose my notation as you do in this version of chess best i put it back then it is saying bishop g6 check king e7 bishop f4 Let, let's play a couple more moves shall we uh, f takes check here bishop f4 is stockfish castles it's going bishop f4 it prefers actually bishop f4 control a stockfish fish 15 in fact it is now and it's giving at least plus one. 
at least plus one. Um, and it's just not a position, even if it were playable, it's not something you want against a machine because you make one mistake and you're toast and it won't make any tactical mistakes. The mistakes it makes are positional, not tactical. So it's an absolutely insane position to play against a computer. And he lost, like, horribly. And it's just, it's a category error. The first time I faced knight g5, I played h6, allowing this sacrifice, just because I was too stupid to notice it was possible. I was against Eddie Gufeld, and he believed me. But that, and I was lucky, but I mean, that was just me being stupid and not looking at knight e6. But, uh, let's just have a look at this horrible, horrible game. I don't know. It's just disgusting. You can't play positions like this. You don't have a king. Okay, he gives up the queen, and then the guy goes c4. Sorry, not the guy. The entity go plays c4. I don't know if you've seen, you saw the stuff about Google in the question of the Chinese room recently, whether... Um, some AI is starting to ha have consciousness, but probably not. Anyway, this was certainly not a conscious thing. It was Deep Blue, which was a construct made to play chess. But it played chess well, and it was just very foolish indeed of Kasparov to believe that the opening book, because even if they said they weren't going to um, fiddle with it, you're still going to do some last minute bits and pieces, and it could change things. So there we are. So don't mess around with a computer. There's another another question, actually, um, which I was thinking. I, I'm recording on Saturday. Uh, this comes up on a Sunday after the first round of the candidates. And I saw a poor playing. I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to copy this over into the column as well. Um, where are we? Where is Spain, Spain, Spain? Here's Spain, Madrid. OK, so rapport. Um, on move um, 6 or 7 he played g6 didn't he and for the rest of the game he was suffering where is this bloody mouse control v so I just noticed this and I thought push f4 was unusual and he played g6 Let, let's add as kibitzer I assume there are reasonable moves I assume we'll add stockfish again And it's saying rook c5 or rook b8 is reasonable. Uh, bishop b7 is reasonable as well. Uh, okay. But he played g6, and I assume this was a wind-up, partly. And after the excellent move c5, which, I mean, okay, I haven't even looked. I was streaming yesterday, and I didn't really look at the intricacies of this. It's just clear it's incredibly dangerous. After c5... He was suffering for the next was that 25 moves and I just thought do you need to play the wind up move g6 after about 20 minutes of the candidates tournament <coughs> and I thought not but I do know that Rapport is a guy who likes to wind his opponents up <coughs> so you have to be true to yourself but in this case he really suffered afterwards so I thought winding up is something you should do when, um, I mean, he may just genuinely have thought it was the best move, of course, but I imagine he quite enjoyed playing it <laughs> until he got hit by c5. I don't know what happens if queen a5 check, I suppose knight d2 or something. Queen a5 check, knight d2, queen takes pawn, knight c4. It's obviously unbelievably dangerous. You can get your queen trapped, awful things can happen, and it's not a position you should remotely be, be playing at that stage. So it's just a question of choosing your moments. And this was a pretty bad one, I think, to try to wind his opponent up. But I may be traducing him. He may just have thought that was the best move. And of course, the early moments of the candidates tournament are incredibly stressful. OK, so the next column will be on the 1st of, no, it won't be on the 3rd of July, I suppose. In a, uh, in a fortnight. So I hope you've enjoyed this and enjoy the candidates. Um, as I said, I am one of the many, many people streaming it. Though, I mean, you know, Ivan shook his, which is fantastic, or just 24. But if you want me 
being silly in my way, then it's twitch.tv forward slash John Spielman. And I hope I might see you there or I'll see you in a fortnight. Cheers then.